Belgium and Hawaii are investigating loot boxes. Are video game loot boxes exposing minors to gambling? That's the answer authorities are seeking in Belgium and Hawaii. Loot boxes are virtual containers earned or purchased while playing a video game. They typically contain a randomized assortment of virtual items aimed at enhancing the player's experience and in-game abilities. Because of the elements of chance and money involved, Belgian and Hawaiian authorities are investigating whether the practice exposes minors to gambling. According to the Brisbane Times, a regulatory analyst for the state of Victoria and Australia said loot boxes do constitute gambling but are difficult to regulate. Loot boxes have been commonplace in gaming for some time now, but it was Electronic Arts' use of them in Star Wars Battlefront II that prompted recent concern. Hawaii State Representative Chris Lee described the loot box system in a new Star Wars game as an online casino designed to lure kids into spending money. Lee reckons publisher Electronic Arts employed predatory practices against children with their controversial loot box system in the game Star Wars Battlefront II. What's your favorite game? EA Battlefront 2 replies sparks Reddit savagery. American video game giant Electronic Arts is taking more hits than the rebel base on Hoth after it responded to a fan's complaint on Reddit. User MBM Maverick complained that he paid 80 bucks for the hotly anticipated online shooter Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Darth Vader was unplayable. EA said their intent was to provide games with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. That official response sparked what might be one of the most downvoted Reddit comments in history, with 67,000 downvotes and rising. Vader is reportedly locked behind the game's progression system and not available from the get-go. According to Forbes, he and his, spoiler alert, son Luke cost 60,000 in-game credits apiece. Credits are part of Battlefront 2's in-game economy and are earned via playtime. Forbes reports that 11 minutes of playtime equates to around 275 credits. Some Reddit users estimated it could take up to 40 hours of playtime to get Vader and another 40 hours to get Luke. Those combined 80 hours equate to nearly half a week. Loot boxes can also reportedly be bought with crystals and those crystals cost real-world dollars. And that's after you put down 60 or 80 bucks for the game. But hey, it's only EA. What more could possibly go wrong? World's hottest PC game to get locked out of China. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds may be a smash hit everywhere in the world, but leave it to China to take aim at the survival video game's violent content. Gameplay in Battlegrounds is Hunger Games style. It starts with players parachuting into a desert island, scavenging for all sorts of weapons, and then fighting each other to the death. Last Man Standing wins. Despite not yet officially launching in China, the game already has a sizable chunk of Chinese players. But with regulators complaining of too much blood and gore, it looks like Battlegrounds won't be getting a license anytime soon. If it does, expect it to be heavily cut and censored to fit socialist core values and traditional Chinese culture. Hmm, fun. The Chinese Copyright Association may not be a fan of violently competitive games, but better violent in a game than in real life which might be the case if the players get fed up with their policing. Mario Game Features NYC-Inspired World Hold up, Tomo Sapiens. We know we're late to the party with this, but that new Mario game has a New York-inspired area called New Donk City. It's got big yellow cabs, skyscrapers, and everything. And yeah, we've never seen that before. Word is that it's bye-bye to the iconic end-level flagpoles and possibly maybe hello to Metro card price hikes? Remember, if you take Mario & Co. for a ride on the Metro, absolutely no man spreading ever. And who needs mushroom power-ups when you've got all that great food? But let's hope everybody's favorite ex-plumber doesn't jump down any pipes. Big Apple Roaches take no prisoners. Are you getting the latest Super Mario cash grab? If so, do not let us know in the comments below. Unexpected Halloween Treat for Pokemaniacs Listen up, Tomo Sapiens. It's Halloween, and you know what that means. Gen 3 Pokemon. Wait, what? For those of you not in the Pokemon know, the mobile monster catching game Pokemon Go is still a thing, and at Halloween, it's getting a spooky update. 
You may remember the game from last summer when it spawned hordes of smartphone zombies. And with this new update, it looks set to do the same again, only this time at Halloween. And what does said update contain? Reportedly, more Pokémon than you can throw a Pokéball at. And that means more Pokémon Go mishaps, but with a Halloween twist. Such as mistaking that friendly-looking clown down the drain for a Mr. Mime. Or blindly trick-or-treating your way all the way to Slenderman's house. But hey, anything for a legendary, right?